Welcome everyone. Today I will be showing you how to do loop remodeling in Interactive Rosetta using the Kick protocol. With this protocol, you can sample different conformations of existing loops on your proteins or create new loops with new sequences from scratch. I will be using the standard demonstration protein for this tutorial, so let me go and load a copy of it first. Now we can go over to the loop modeling kick protocol in the menu and take a look at the controls. There are not too many controls, so it should not take too long to set up a kick job. There are three main modes for kick. Refine mode performs only high resolution kick on your loops. Reconstruct mode will perform the entire kick simulation, including the initial low resolution sampling step, so you will be able to sample more diverse loop conformations. De novo mode allows you to create a new loop in place of an existing loop with a new sequence. I am going to go out here in the sequence and delete this loop out here. You can delete residues by selecting them and using the delete key. Now we will try to get the loop back using kick. There are a bunch of menus over here, but the easier thing to do is select your loop and then right click on the menus to update them with your selection. So I want these two residues right over here as endpoints for the new loop we will be creating. Then I right click, and all the information is filled in. I should point out that for new loops, the beginning and ending residues are the anchor points, so these residues will not be mutated. The new sequence will appear in between the two of them. Since I am designing a new loop, I need to give it a sequence. This was the original sequence. But I am going to add a couple of extra residues at the end to prove that you can add loops of any size. If your loop is too short, it will not be able to span the distance between the two endpoints, so be aware of that. You cannot use a unique pivot residue for de novo loops, but for refining or reconstructing loops you can specify distinct residue to act as a pivot. The pivot point will be a breakpoint along the loop such that the loop in between the pivot and the terminal residues will move but the pivot will stay fixed. You can imagine the pivot as the elbow on a robotic arm. Finally, add this loop to your loops file. You can specify more than one loop to remodel at a time, but I am only going to create this loop for now. There are some advanced options down here. This kick type button is only available if you are doing a reconstruction. You can tell the kick mover to only run the low resolution mode and convert back to full atom mode but not perform the high resolution step. Some people were asking for this feature so I made it available. You can also specify how many models to return if running on the external server. You will only get one if you run it locally. In fact I will run this one locally so you can see what happens on the local machine. When you are ready, click on the kick button. You will end up getting this fancy progress bar to show you how far along in the simulation you are. It performs the low resolution kick step first but there is no progress information for low resolution mode, so you have to wait a bit until high resolution kick modeling starts and the progress bar begins to receive information. There it goes. The time estimation is off in the beginning because it includes the low resolution step as part of the first update. So it thinks that every update will include the low resolution step. As it goes along, the time estimation becomes more accurate. This process takes about 8 minutes, so I will see you in a bit when it is finished. Ok, it looks like it is done. Before I accept the simulation, I can take a look at specific residues in the loop easily by selecting items in this drop down menu. There is the whole new loop. His menu up here will color based on different scoring terms. Anyway. It looks good so I will accept the results of the simulation. Now I can take a look at the sequence window and it looks like I got the loop back with a couple of extra residues added into it, just like I had wanted. Anyway, that is how you build loops using Interactive Rosetta. See you in the next video.